In this question, we're asked to solve the quadratic equation. So the first thing we should always try to do is see if we can factorize it and solve it that way. 2 times 3 is 6, and I write down the factor pairs of 6, and see if I can find a pair that will add up to make 9. It can't be done, so that means that this equation cannot be factorized. The second thing we should try to do then is see if we can complete the square. The problem is this 2 in front here. That's going to give us an awful lot of problems. Bottom line, completing the square isn't going to be the best thing to try this time. But fortunately, there's one last technique that we can use for solving quadratic equations. And it's this thing right here. It's known as the quadratic formula, and the first time you see it, it can look a bit intimidating. It can look kind of scary. But once you actually learn what all these B's and A's and C's are about, and what they mean, it's actually very straightforward. It's very, very simple to use. So the first thing we're going to do is look back at a quadratic equation and just see what it is that they look like. Here's an example of a quadratic equation. Here's another one. 4x squared plus 2x minus 4 equals 0. Here's another one. And here's another one. But the problem that we have is that these are all specific examples of particular quadratic equations. Each one of these is an example of just one quadratic equation. That's a quadratic equation. That's a very specific quadratic equation. What we need instead is a way of trying to explain to somebody what a quadratic equation is in general. What is the same? What do they always have in common? And what is it that changes? If we look back at our examples, well, what's the same? Well, they've always got this x squared in there. They have to have that. They've always got this x, this number at the end here. It's always equal zero. The thing that's actually changing each time are these big numbers, the 2, the 5, and the 6, the 4, the 2, and the minus 4, the 3, the 6, and the minus 11. These are what we call the coefficients of each term. They're what change. So what we're going to do, instead of using actual numbers and giving a specific example, instead we can generalize this by replacing the numbers with other letters, a, b, and c, like this. Once we do that, we say that this is the general form for any and all quadratic equations. So there's only one general form, and this is it. All quadratic equations will look a little bit like this. And so now you can start to get an idea of what those a's, b's, and c's actually mean in the quadratic formula. Here's the quadratic formula again. And again, you can see the b's, the a's, and the c's. So let's look back at our examples. In the first example, we could say this now. a is 2, b is 5, and c is 6. In the second example, we could write down now that for this particular, this specific quadratic equation, that a equals 4, b equals 2, and c equals minus 4. It's really important that you include the sign each time. In our third example, our third specific quadratic equation, we'd say a is 3, b is 6, and c is minus 11. And in that last example, we'd say a is 2, b is minus 3, and c is 1. 